Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again. Thanks for joining me on the Saturday Night live stream, live from Michigan, where you can throw out questions and I'll do my best to get them answered. We'll talk about Bitcoin. We'll talk about the news. We'll talk about altcoins. I'm going to move some crypto around for you guys. Looks like we've got a lot of uh, stuff on our plate tonight. There's a new version of Ledger Live out and uh, some people are having some issues. So we'll play around with that and see if we can't figure out what's going on. Uh, let's go ahead and get this thing started. So welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm here again with the rig. I uh, worked on the rig today. I replaced the power supply. I got the new uh, MSI power supply. Uh, I'll sh show you a little bit. It's got the native connector for my uh, 490 uh, graphics card. Uh, been a lot of controversy about that uh, power connector uh, for the 4090 uh, uh, NVIDIA graphics card. So um, I got that done. Uh, the, it's powering the machine, but it's not showing up in MSI uh, Center the way they said it would, <laughs> even though I have it connected. We'll see. Uh, but that's beside the point. That's just me and the rig. Uh, let's see. It's been a good week. Um, the markets have pretty stayed uh, eerily stable <laughs> ever since the FTX drop a week or so back. Uh, things have just sort of been on an even keel. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about what's moving the market. Uh, let's see. Let me go ahead and greet everyone that's here. Uh, once again, I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. Uh, thank you for all of the uh, people that came in early and asked questions. I've been uh, furiously trying to uh, get myself uh, ready to troubleshoot some of these issues that uh, Psychedelic Astronaut uh, is having and uh, Valco is having. Valco's having trouble with uh, dot balances or and or transaction histories in Ledger Live. And Psychedelic Astronaut is having some trouble with uh, one of his coins, Optimism. So I'm going to play around with that just a tad. And let's see, Shahid, thank you for being here. Mr. Miski, thanks for being here. Dan should be here shortly. Uh, e. Poston from Colorado, thank you for being here. Valco is here, of course. Uh, ben is here. Uh, wondering when I'm going to own up to what I did. Uh, I'll never tell. <laughs> If I did anything, <laughs> uh, let's see. Ooh, a lot of people just jumped in. Uh, Marco S. Ben. Mag oh, we, we asked. We said hello to Ben. Frank Rodriguez. Scott Lee. Thanks for being here again, Frank and Scott. Amsterdam Hollam, Holland. Popcorn time. Yes, yes. Birds, bees and trees here early. W. Back again. Nice to see you. Uh, Grant Caldwell. What do I do if I've forgotten my ledger password? It opens on face recognition, but if I lose my phone, I'm a dead man. <laughs> uh, the ledger password is really not that important. Uh, if you're just talking about the password that you use to log in to Ledger Live, you can always uh, do a clean install of Ledger Live and set a new password. Uh, but you will have to re-add all of your accounts, and that can be a bit of a, a chore, uh, I do have a video on that. Uh, let's see, Ledger Live, reinstall. Someone else was asking me, having trouble with uh, uh, something something to do that needed a clean install. This is the most recent one. Uh, I'll just uh, throw this in the... Uh, you can click on that link if you want to check that out. That's about doing a clean install. Not for the faint of heart. But if you forget your password, I guess you're screwed. <laughs> um, yeah, and the password on your mobile app and the password on your desktop app are not related in any way or form. Uh, we talked about this last week. The password for Ledger Live is just a password f to get into the application. It has nothing to do with protecting your crypto. It just protects Ledger Live, and it can be toggled on and off. And if you forget it, you can reinstall Ledger Live. Uh, let's see. Pete Martin from England. Hey. Oh, I said I was going to help, but I stole everything. Ben McGuire, I uh, am so sorry that 
someone scammed you, but I don't do uh, one-on-one tech support. So if someone claiming to be me uh, tried to help you, then you got scammed by an imposter. Uh, I could go through my YouTube comments and show you literally hundreds of imposters pretending to be me. Happens all the time. Uh, let's see. Let's go to... Eh, I want to try to get to... Uh, let's try uh, this one. Uh, okay, I'm fumbling around here. Let me see if I can find an imposter. They're not that hard to find. Uh, here we go. There's one right there. Hit me up at CryptoDad11. Thanks for watching. Send a direct message via Telegram. You really think that's me? Come on. Uh, there, let's check out this guy's channel. 10 subscribers. Hmm, doesn't look like the Crypto Dad channel to me. The Crypto Dad channel, uh, let's see. There it is. I've got 147,000 subscribers. So this other dude, it's not me, right? So don't get uh, sucked in by these people pretending to be me in the comment section. It's not just my channel, it's every YouTube channel that has anything to do with crypto. And I'm assuming they probably do the same thing on like financial, whatever. It's, it's a scam. So try to avoid it. Like I said, I'm really sorry something like that happened to you, but it's not me. I don't, <laughs> I have no use. Uh, I don't contact people directly. Uh, let's see, where were we? We were trying to figure out what the heck I was doing. There we go. I uh, got a fake one earlier from another YouTuber. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's see. Let's jump in the news real quick. We'll talk uh, about the markets. Uh, Bitcoin slips as U.S. economy added a strong 263K jobs in November. Why would uh, Bitcoin slip if the jobs report was good? Hmm, Seems kind of strange to me. Uh, a strong job report is good news, isn't it? Not in the topsy-turvy topsy -turvy world we live in. No, in this world, good news is bad news because good jobs mean that we're not in a recession and that the Fed will continue to raise rates, which is bad for the market. <laughs> Employers added 263 jobs in November, uh, down from an upwardly revised 284,000 in October, but topping expectations of 200,000 as the U.S. economy continues to show signs of strength. The employment rate remained at 3.7 in line with expectations. Bitcoin slipped about $200. $200? Come on. <laughs> That's like a nothing burger if I ever heard one. I don't think really Bitcoin has had much reaction at all to any of the market news over the last couple of days. Uh, but the stock market did uh, take uh, a dive early in the day, and then it recovered after everyone realized that it wasn't that big of a deal and that the jobs report is BS anyway. <laughs> but unfortunately, uh, the official jobs report from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics does... Um, tend to guide Fed actions, or so they say. So uh, the official jobs report uh, should have some effect on whether the Fed or is going to raise or lower rates, right? But um, we all know that the jobs report is a bunch of BS, that uh, unemployment rate is also BS, uh, and the inflation rate is BS, uh, these are all just kind of contrived uh, statistics that they spit out um, for uh, the mainstreams to munch on, right? So uh, I, I linked to an article down below. By the way, all of the articles that I'm going to talk about are linked down below in the description. If you don't see everything in the description, just click that little show more and you'll see all this stuff and down... Uh, down here, you can see that I've linked to these articles at the very top. Some stuff we're going to be doing tonight. Hopefully, we can get to all this stuff and a bunch of affiliate links for you guys to enjoy and click on. And if you're interested in any of these products, uh, please use my affiliate links. I would appreciate it. 
and some coins I've uh, got on my radar. So uh, since we're, I have all these stories linked below, I just wanted to point out this story talking about um, how ridiculous uh, the jobs report is and how they cherry-pick the data. There are actually two job, uh, uh, let's see what, what you would call it, uh, types of job reports. There's the household report and the establishment report. And the establishment report is the one that uh, the Fed kind of works from. But the household report um, really is slightly more accurate. Um, I can't remember exactly what it is, but I think establishment has to do with um, company data and household has to do with individual data. And uh, there is a huge discrepancy between the establishment survey and the household survey. Uh, the household survey uh, is not looking too good. It's showing a lot of weakness in the job market, which is uh, more accurate as far as the fact that the Fed is raising rates is bringing on uh, a recession, right? Um, as the Fed raises rates, it gets more expensive to borrow and to do business because of high interest rates. And so companies start to lay people off and uh, employment gets higher and we enter a recession. That's just part of it. There's a lot more to it. Um, but the establishment survey is uh, sort of whistling in the dark. Oh, uh, you know, jobs looking good. You know, we're not, we're, uh, uh, we don't have to worry about a recession. We can keep raising rates and uh, we can keep fighting inflation. Uh, but really what's happening is the, sh the, the jobs situation is getting worse. The fact that the Fed is raising rates is causing a problem, and uh, they're caught between a rock and a hard place. But, uh, you know, I won't go into this too much because it's not really crypto-related. It's market-related. But if you get down to the bottom here, it's basically just... Uh, uh, more people are losing their higher-paying full-time jobs and switching into much lower-paying, benefits-free part-time jobs. That's kind of the nub of the gist. Um, so uh, and that's what the established. I mean, that's what the household survey is showing. And the household survey is a is a BLS uh, Bureau of Labor and Statistics official figure, right? They just don't talk about it that much when they talk about the jobs report. Uh, and if you look at a, you know, something like shadow stats, you can see that the, the inflation data is much higher than they're saying, and jobs, uh, the unemployment figures are much higher than uh, what they're saying. I don't know why we're talking about this. Let's go to the next story here. Dems and reps, Republicans, I guess, join forces to pressure uh, SBF, Samuel uh, bachman fried to testify before Congress. Your willingness to talk to the public will help companies, customers, investors, and others, said House Financial Services Committee Chair Maxine Waters, uh, addressing SBF. Now, SBF uh, did attend, virtually attend, um, some sort of conference, I believe, on Friday, if I'm not mistaken, uh, when exactly that was, in New York with uh, somebody, Sorkin, I think, and uh, talked uh, and answered a lot of low, you know, uh, softball questions. But there were uh, some uh, legal people that said he incriminated himself quite a bit just in that uh, little video stream from he's in the Bahamas still. So uh, now uh, the... <laughs> Congress would like him to come testify uh, so that they can ask him questions about what was going on at SB, uh, at FTX, right, which collapsed a couple weeks ago, bankrupt cryptocurrency exchange. Um, you know, whether that's going to fix anything, we don't know. Um, and whether he's actually going to set foot in the U.S., uh, probably a bad idea, right, if he's incriminating himself. He's claiming that, you know, he didn't do anything wrong. He wasn't trying to fraud anybody. Um, but he did admit that, you know, things happened that, you know, he wished hadn't happened. And, you know, if you're uh, the CEO of a company and you're admitting 
uh, that you weren't aware of something uh, that you you know you're responsible for, you can be held accountable for that kind of stuff. So we'll see. But you know, just saying you're sorry and that you really didn't mean it and you weren't trying to hurt anybody isn't going to cut it, at least not in a court of law. So we'll see. Um, but I doubt he's going to show up and testify before Congress. But Congress is using the FTX debacle uh, to try to uh, pass through some serious crypto regulation, and um, it could be bad for crypto in general. Um, they're they're trying, you know. It's it's really not supposed to be regulated in the first place. It's outside the the financial system. But the whole mechanism, the on ramps of how people buy it and all that, um, they would like to have control over that so that people won't get scammed. How they're going to help prevent people from getting scammed, I don't know, because people get scammed whether Congress is involved or not. You know, scammers will be scammers and uh, victims will be victims. Okay, so let's go to this next one. How to keep your cryptocurrency safe after the FTX collapse. Uh, that's the title of the live stream. I want to try to uh, talk about uh, the best way to keep your cryptocurrency safe. And uh, this article is pretty good. It's linked down below. Move your funds out of the exchange. Number one, uh, keep your crypto offline in your own wallet. Uh, there are lots of different wallets you can use. Uh, there are hot wallets, cold wallets, in the middle wallets, however you want to think about them, um, desktop based wallets like Electrum Bitcoin wallet or MetaMask are free, and you can use those to manage crypto uh, where you control the private keys. But a, a better way to manage crypto is by using a hardware wallet, uh, which looks something like this. It's a little device that you can attach to your computer. And it controls the, it, the private keys are stored on those devices, uh, stored offline, right? They never really, they don't leave the device. The only reason you have a cable is for the, the messages coming in and out, like the request and the approval. But the private key, which is what controls the wallet, always stays on the device. It's used cryptographically to sign transactions and verify that kind of stuff. So hardware wallet, good solution. Don't trust verify. Uh, don't put your trust in a crypto exchange or a lending platform that's promising you uh, big rewards that seem too good to be true. Um, there are ways to earn money on your crypto. Someone earlier asked about ADA in my um, comments, and ADA is a good uh, crypto that's very easy to stake. You can earn a return on it uh, just by keeping it in your wallet and staking it. Uh, Atom is another good crypto that you can earn returns on. DOT can be staked. Uh, so there's a lot of cryptos that you can stake natively. So uh, yeah, the rewards are not as sexy as some of these online lending platforms that are pr you know, promising you 10 and 20%. But uh, if you have it in your own wallet, you're much more secure. So better to keep your crypto in your own wallet and not to trust uh, lending platforms and uh, any pie-in-the-sky thing where they talk about what could. Uh, if it seems too good to be true, it probably isn't. And if you have to store your crypto uh, in their, on their centralized servers, then that's a risk. Just having to store it on their servers in order to earn this return, that's the risk right there. You want to try to avoid that if possible. All right, let's pop out chat here and uh, take it over to the other side so that I can uh, keep an eye on what's going on. JDO, thanks for being here. F <laughs> SBF was baking cookies. I think he was probably playing video games. I think SBF is notorious for like playing video games while he's doing, you know, doing virtual business meetings or whatever. So, uh, yes, BlockFi has uh, declared bankruptcy as well. Uh, Scott knows about staking. That's cool. 
All right, so uh, there was a new version of Ledger Live that came out this week, and I did a video on that. Uh, you should uh, check that one out. It goes over, uh, and whoa, I just happened to have it here. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I hope I didn't put the wrong link down there earlier. I think I, maybe I did. What did I do? Uh, no, no, I think so. I'm going to drop a link over to that. So uh, it's basically, uh, you know, I've whenever there's, not every time, but most of the time when they have new versions of Ledger Live, I'll do a, little, I'll do a video on how you download it and install it. And they seem to get a lot of views. Uh, but, and so, but I'm basically showing you the same thing over and over again. How do you, you know, you run the inline update, you check to make sure that your uh, apps and your firmware are up to date, and then uh, everything's fine, right? And then if you can't run the inline update, um, then um, you can always quit Ledger Live and run over and just download it uh, from their website and then run the most recent installer. Uh, um, yeah, so if you just go over to ledger.com and then go to the Ledger uh, Live section and just download the latest installer, right? You can see right there, the latest installer is 2.50.1.0, right? You just download that drop it into your downloads folder and run it. It's already in there. <laughs> yeah, I was doing that. So yeah, I mean, you basically just go into your downloads folder and run it. It's not rocket science, right? You just run it. Run the installer and on top of the Ledger Live that's already on there and uh, you should be fine. Uh, when you relaunch Ledger Live, you'll be running the latest version. Now, uh, I had someone earlier asking about, I, they said, oh, I did the update and now I can't connect my uh, Ledger to Ledger Live. And when people say that, I don't know what they mean by that. Um, I'm assuming they mean that Ledger Live says the device isn't connected or whatever. But it's interesting because... Uh, you can run Ledger Live, and the whether or not the device is connected doesn't come into play when you launch Ledger Live. It doesn't go, hey, your device isn't connected. It just launches. So I'm not sure how people are figuring out that they're not connected to Ledger Live. Um, but I'm assuming that probably when they go into the account, and uh, maybe like they do a receive and it says something like connect your device and like you connect your device and nothing happens, I'm assuming. Um, or you're trying to send and then it says uh, connect your device and nothing happens or whatever. Uh, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about Ledger Live and the ledger device uh the ledger people think because it's crypto that there's something special or magical about ledger live and this device it's basically just a gadget connected to your computer and we've been connecting gadgets to our computer since like the late 90s right uh thank you so much zero zero for that ten zero zero i really appreciate it uh, but it's the same old story. You know, I used to sell computers in the late 90s, and the top complaint was, I can't print. I can't print. Everybody was like, I can't print. You know, and it's like, is the printer connected? Huh? Is the printer connected to the back of your computer? Huh? Like, can you please look in the back of your computer and make sure that the, the cable is connected? And... Back in those days, Max used to have this thing called a serial cable, which I believe had nine pins. And then on the back of the Mac was this circular little connection that had nine holes in it. And it had to be oriented a certain way 
for the pins to go in. They were in a certain configuration, and people would just jam it in there without looking at it, and then they couldn't print because it wasn't connected. I'd go over to people's houses and pull that cable out and look, and all the pins, you know, were like smashed together, you know. So I'd take like a fork or whatever and straighten the pins out and stick it in there, and then they could print, all right? So why am I talking about this? What I'm talking about is if it's, you have to make a physical connection, right? So if it's not, if, if it tells you it can't, doesn't see your device in whatever way it's doing that, right? Please connect and it never like goes past that. Make sure that your device is connected. Make sure that it's, you know, in the USB port in the back of your computer or on the side of your computer if you're using a laptop. Try a different port, right? I mean, this is stuff we've known for years. Try a different port. If that doesn't work, the first thing, disconnect it, reconnect it. Does wonders, right? Oh, my God, it's not seeing my device. I'm like, disconnect it and reconnect. Try, you know, to, like, kick it in the butt or whatever you got to do to get it to mount up on the computer. Because if that's the problem, it's just a gadget connected to your computer. Worst case scenario, try a different cable. People think, oh, God, I have to use the ledger cable. No, you don't. It's just a, a USB-C cable. So try a different cable. Try rebooting your computer. A lot of people will bang their head against the wall for hours and never reboot their computer. That's always the first thing I do if I'm having trouble. First thing, reboot. Fixes 99, well, 99, fixes 90% of the problems that you're having of a good a reboot of your computer. So please, guys, uh, I know a Ledger Live is a little complicated and all that stuff, but it's just a gadget connected to your computer in many respects. So if it's not recognizing your device, whatever you mean by that, try troubleshooting the connection itself. Yeah, you know, don't keep thinking something you did something wrong in Ledger Live, right? Maybe the, vi the device isn't connected right. Uh, the same with Ledger Live, right? Uh, you can reinstall Ledger Live. We talked about that earlier. Uh, you can go into the settings of Ledger Live, uh, to the help section, and do reset. Uh, basically, reset is a clean install of Ledger Live. It goes into your preferences folder and deletes all of your Ledger Live preferences. And then when you relaunch Ledger Live, after you click that, it's pretty much, it's empty, right? Nothing's there. Um, and so you have to re-add all of your accounts, which is not a problem. You just connect your device and go over to the accounts section, which would be empty, and then start re-adding accounts. Done this hundreds of times uh, Thousands, no, no, not maybe not thousands, right? But we've done this in the live stream a few times. But I'm not, I won't do it tonight because there's some other stuff we want to mess around with. So uh, someone was having issues with um, dot uh, when I I ran my update. And another thing too, if you run your update and it breaks Ledger Live, that something's not right. Um, I have never had an update to Ledger Live break my Ledger Live. I just haven't. Um, there, there are bugs occasionally, but I've never had the update break anything. But apparently it's happened to some people with dot, right? So if I go into my dot, uh, of course it's empty, but I do have my uh, uh, transaction history here. So uh, a couple people were mentioning that they were it, they couldn't see their balance. They had no transaction history. They're freaking out. Where's my dot? You know, my dot, it's not gonna. Your dot is not going anywhere. the The wallets are con, are the private keys of the wallets are on the device, right? So Ledger Live is not going to can't cannot erase your crypto, right? It might not be showing up properly but it's not going to erase your crypto. It's not going to, your, your crypto is not going to disappear because you ran Ledger Live Update. Um, 
and you know, take a good look at yourself, right? How old is the computer that you're using? Is it like seven years old? Or what version of Windows are you running? Are you still running Windows 7, Windows Visa, Windows 8? I mean, sometimes you might have just been barely like uh, plugging along. And then when you ran the update, yeah, you whacked something out because your system is just barely usable, right? Do you have malware on your computer? Do you have adware, spyware, uh, all this kind of stuff that just bogs your system down? Um, you know, clean up your own house and then blame Ledger Live, right? Don't always blame the software when something... I, I've had people, oh, Ledger Live sucks. I won't run on my computer. And I'm like, okay, runs on mine. Oh, uh, I don't know why I wouldn't run on yours. You know what? You know, oh, I'm running Windows 7. Well... It's not compatible with Windows 7, you know. So kind of look at where you are with your computer. Is it an old computer? Maybe you should get a new computer. Maybe you should do a clean install of Windows. Uh, maybe you should run some utilities, whatever. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's an environmental issue. Your, your computer is just like on its last legs, and it's just, there's... Ledger Live is just too much for it. Anyway, uh, let's go over to... Uh, oh, uh, we're going to do the um, the whole... Uh, okay, I... Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm like, come on. At, it still thinks I have this... Okay, fine. Okay, good. All right. So we're not keeping anything on, on Coinbase, right? We're going to practice good uh, computer savviness by not keeping things on exchanges. But we still need exchanges to make trades and transfers, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, receive some uh, stablecoin into our account so that we can make some trades, right? I wrote down, I want to buy some DOT and some ADA. And I, are, I bought some optimism for uh, the gentleman who was here earlier. I don't know if he's still here or not. But uh, let's go ahead and, uh, first of all, I need to send, okay, I need to send, uh, whoops, no, uh, USDC. I want to drop some US dollar coin. Oh, we could, you know what, I was going to do this and I forgot. Uh, the US dollar coin that I have in my wallet is ERC20, but I was going to uh, do it on the Polygon network, but we won't do that. I forgot. Anyway, uh, we're going to receive it. We'll send it off from our uh, wallet. Actually, maybe I can put it back in there later. All right. Let's use the U.S. dollar coin. Let's send uh, to the Coinbase address. And let's do 300 U.S. dollar coin. Here's the new ETH interface. I don't know how much different it is from before. But you can, uh, you can adjust your uh, estimated fees. Uh, I wouldn't recommend slow. Um, people think, oh, it'll save me eight cents, you know. But it's just going to cause you heartache on a, when, when right now the Ethereum uh, network is not overloaded like it was back in 2021, uh, 20, late 2020 and 2021. People were like trying to send Ethereum and the fees were just outrageous. And so they were trying slow uh, to save money and then it would be days before their transfers would get where they were going. So I like to stick to medium. But like now uh, the traffic is way down because we're in a bear market. So it's not that much of a difference. But basically, it'll take longer and cost you less if you use slow, or it will take about an average amount of time, cost you about an average amount of fees, or uh, you can pay more fees and supposedly it'll be faster. Right? I'm just going to stick to the default, which is $2.18 to send my $300. A little steep. Right? That's why I should have done it with Polygon, but I'm, maybe we can do that later. The die is cast, right? It was already in my wallet. 
Uh, let's see. I need to get out. Oh, well, uh, let's turn this thing on here. I need to, whoops. Where are we? There we go. There we go. Uh, it's asking me to open the Ethereum app, right? So I'll take care of that by clicking both buttons, and then I'll just do this retry. Something went wrong. Please connect my device. Now, uh, maybe that's what our uh, the questioner that was asking me. Oh, it's not connecting. Well, uh, so maybe he should have looked at his device and did what it's asked him to do and then just retried, right? So this time it should work. See? Boom. There. All you had to do was open the Ethereum app and try again. Not, I didn't even have to reconnect it. I just followed the instructions, right? Uh, this is another big one that happens a lot, is that people are not looking at their device. And Ledger Live is telling you you need to do something on your device. It used to be a lot worse. Now it tells you, hey, look at your device. Back in the old days, it would just, eh, and people were like, I don't get it. And I was like, well, the device is asking you something. And you have to do something on the on the device before, you know, the screen is going to advance. All right. All right. So we got that. So there was a little bit of troubleshooting we did there, right? Uh, this one went out. Uh, you can see here that I have this sent transaction. Uh, while we're waiting for that to hit Coinbase, I don't know if the gentleman is still here, but his question was. Uh, he sent Optimism to his Coinbase wallet. Oh, it's not even there anymore. Well, he said he sent Optimism to his Coinbase wallet as an ERC-20 token. Well, um, whoops, sorry, wrong camera. Um, I bought a little bit on Coinbase, and um, this Optimism... And when I tried to send it, um, it didn't give me the option of whether it was ERC-20 or Optimism. It's just Optimism. I don't know, maybe when you bought it back along, you know, a few months back, that's how they have it. A lot of times that's how Coinbase works. Like, for example, Matic. Uh, for a long time, the only way you could buy Matic on Coinbase was as an ERC-20 token. And it was the ERC-20 version of Matic, and it really wasn't that useful. It maybe is an investment, but native Matic, it can be, takes advantage of all the, you know, the stuff that Polygon Network can do, right? So now they have support for Polygon and ERC-20. So maybe that's what happened with Optimism. When he bought his Optimism, it was only available as an ERC-20 token. But unfortunately for me, I just bought a little bit before the live stream started, and it's only, when I went to withdraw it, it doesn't ask me which network. So he said that he was doing this in uh, the Coinbase wallet. So I'm going to do this. And let's see here. Okay, this Coinbase wallet is connected to my Ledger device. I don't know if uh, that was how, um, I can't remember, it was Vault, no, it wasn't Volcanic, it was some somebody else. Oh, Psychedelic, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I went to the wallet first and hit Receive and copied the address. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. If I can get my mouse to come back. Okay, he went Receive, and then uh, he got the address of the wallet. Okay, and then we went back to Coinbase, and we pasted in the address. Whoops, yeah. And then we said, send. Okay, it's going to cost me a little bit. And let's see, Coinbase. All right. Now, I don't know how long this is going to take either. Um, how long we'll have to wait for it to actually show up in the Coinbase wallet. Now, just because... I'm using the Coinbase wallet doesn't mean that it's in Coinbase per se, right? They're two separate things. I hate, 
I, that's one of the reasons I don't like Coinbase Wallet because it makes people think that somehow they're accessing their Coinbase assets and they blur the line because they allow you to connect the wallet to your Coinbase account to make transfers kind of easier. But I think it's just kind of confusing to a lot of people. Uh, let's go back here and let's see. Um, Bobbity boo there. Okay. So it's showing up here. And so basically uh, you were saying when you went here, uh, okay, it says this, a this asset is on the Optimism Network. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So, uh, and he's trying to send it out. So, um, nah, okay. Okay, but it does say send. Okay, but uh, max. Okay, well, it should allow me to send it. Um, hmm. I'm just trying to think. Oh, I can send it to my other Ethereum wallet um, if I want to. Will uh, Ethereum hidden? Will it receive here? I'm just grabbing this address. All right. And then I'll explain this in a bit here. All right. So um, what you were saying was when you tried to send it, it wasn't allowing you to send it. It was telling you you needed more ETH. Uh, I'm going to try and send it to this address. Okay. Uh, oh, 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 okay. May be required for the transaction. Please deposit more ETH. And uh, as we mentioned, there is ETH in the wallet. Um, is there? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's plenty of ETH in the wallet. Um, yeah, so uh, I have a feeling that it needs to be uh, I don't know how we, if you can switch networks in the Coinbase wallet. Um, but what we can do is, um, I was doing this earlier. Uh, let's chain list. Let's, let's add. So I went to chainlist.org. All right. And um, it, and I search for op, uh, optimism, right? So I want to connect my wallet here, and then um, I want to connect to the Coinbase wallet. It asked me, let's let's see if I can get it to. It should at, it should have asked me which wallet um, between. Um, The, the, the first time I did this, it said, do you want to use MetaMask or Coinbase Wallet? And I said Coinbase Wallet, and now it I can't get it to ask me anymore. But anyway, let's go ahead and try it with Coinbase Wallet. All right. So supposedly, I've added that network to my Coinbase Wallet now. Um, but, oh, here. All right, so uh, now I have optimism. Now that I'm in the optimism, if I try to send the opt, is it going to let me do that? Ah, pooies. All right, let's try that. Uh, let's try max. Is it still? Okay, let's. Nope. Okay, sorry. Let's go back. To this. Whoops. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Uh, is it still going to? No. Yeah. Woo. Ouch. Uh, da 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 da. That I don't. I don't know. I don't know why it's. It's telling you that it is ETH, but it doesn't make sense because. Uh, because we're on the Optimism network, we I believe we should be using Optimism and not ETH. Uh, so my question to you earlier was, were you using uh, MetaMask or not? Let's can I switch this? 
Uh, can I disconnect this from there? I don't know how to do this. I've never had to do this before. Okay. <laughs> Let's try it this way. Uh, this is the exact same. Uh, and I wanted to see if we could get optimism chain list dot org and it's probably going to be stuck all right yeah okay maybe it'll allow this yes okay all right so let's go ahead and add that to uh metamask no doggone it er huh chain id 10 Why does it keep selling add to Coinbase wallet? Oh. Oh, because it's the same damn wallet. Err. Oh. Okay. It's like I wanted to use MetaMask, but I can't figure out how to make that happen now that I've committed myself to the. Oh. Okay. Let's try this. Uh, let's see, add to Coinbase. Nope, 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 MetaMask. All right, okay. Okay, I'm going to have to do this manually. Okay, where are the settings? Okay, here we go. This is what I want. I'm just putting them over here so that I can see what I'm doing. All right, so we're going to add a new network to uh, add network. Okay, here we go. There we go. Oh, oh, you can do it right in uh, MetaMask. It'll let me do it. Yay. Easy peasy. All right. Okay. All right, so now we switched over to Optimism. Got it. And where's our Optimism? Now, <laughs> that's crazy. Don't see your token? No, I don't. Uh, let's see. What is the, uh, oh my God. This is telling me that that's the um, contract. All right, so let's try that. Okay. Which is weird because I would think that that would be, huh. So somehow I've got to get Ethan here that's on the Optimism Network. Uh, and that's kind of weird. I don't know how to do that, to be honest. Uh, but I think that's the issue, that we need, like, Optimism-based Ethereum in this wallet to pay our fees. Um, I'm not really sure how you do that. Um how to add ETH to an optimism wallet. Uh, how do you send ETH to optimism? Okay. Connecting MetaMask. Now put the hospital. Okay. Oh, we got a bridge asset. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, you sh maybe we could do this. Okay. So we're going to go to the portfolio site. And we're going to use this bridge here. And we're going to go from Ethereum to... Ah, it's not there. Ouch. Can't do it. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Okay. <sighs> okay, bridging your assets to optimism. Ah, optimism gateway. Okay. I accept. All right. Connect wallet. Uh, we'll use MetaMask. Uh, see, ah, see there. Now it's asking me which one I want. <laughs> we use MetaMask. Uh, 
We want this wallet. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, hmm. From Optimism. Okay, we want from Mainnet to Optimism, right? Because we got some ETH in there. Uh, I hope that's enough. All right. House. Do, 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 do. I think point zero zero five is. Ah, uh, let's do zero one. Uh, okay, we'll do zero two. That should be enough. All right. So zero two. Okay, and that's supposed to go over. Uh, I'll probably have to authorize this on my. Uh, okay. Let's confirm that. And then we'll have to do it. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I got to put blind signing. Okay. <laughs> I was like, no. All right. First, we got to add, we got to enable blind signing in the settings. It's disabled. So we hit both buttons. Now it's enabled. Okay, let's get back out to the main part of the wall. Let's try again. We're going to have to authorize this on the device. There it is. Uh, so I'm moving the Ethereum. What's my fee? $2.48. Okay. Review transaction. Blind signing is enabled. Accept and send. I don't know how long this is going to take. Ooh, look at that glare. Turn that off. 20 minutes? Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, while that's percolating, let's go back over to um, Coinbase. Oh, it, it went through. Yay. Okay. Said it did. At least uh, MetaMask gave me an alert. Now it says it's depositing. That's good. So yeah, uh, a cross-chain transfer like this could take a bit, uh, even though it has confirmed within MetaMask. The confirmation that I got from MetaMask was just that my transaction went out there onto the blockchain. So it might take a few minutes for the, the ETH to convert and end up over on the Optimism network in the wallet as Optimism-based ETH. And then we should have enough to pay our fees for our withdrawal. And I can do that using Coinbase wallet because it's the same, basically the same wallet. Uh, so, but while that's, while we're waiting for that, oh, we got our 300. All right. So first of all, we'll buy some uh, dot, right? Uh, let's buy 50 dot. Uh-huh. Oh. oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Uh, they won't let me trade uh, DOT for U.S. dollar coin, will they? No, they won't. Okay. All right. So what we want to do is convert our um, stable coin into U.S. dollar on Coinbase. And, yeah, I'm incurring tax, whatever. But when you move something... And within a minute or two, convert it. You're not ga gaining or losing a lot. There, there's not a huge gain or loss when I convert dollars to stablecoin. I didn't really lose it or gain anything, right? Um, no, I want the opposite, right? I want to... Oops. You can't buy U.S. dollar, right? Ah, there we go. We can sell all the dollar, the, the U.S. dollar coin into U.S. dollar, and there's no fee. So now we have U.S. dollars in the account. Okay. And now we should have, yeah. So now we can uh, make our trades. Let's do, let's get that dot, what we were talking about. Let's get that 50 dot. Uh, 50, all right. 
$50 worth of DOT, right? Uh, let's see. Let's buy some Bitcoin while we're here. Why not? Uh, BTC. Let's buy 100 bucks worth of Bitcoin. Okay. Uh, let's buy some ADA. We were... Someone asked me about ADA earlier. I'm going to buy some ADA. We'll buy $50 worth of ADA. Uh, let's see. What else did I want? Um, hmm. We'll stop there for the moment. Let's go back over here and see what's happening. Still waiting uh, for that. Looks like it's confirming. That's cool. Let's go ahead and drop that dot into our um, dot wallet on, on uh, Ledger and see if I'm going to have those dot issues now that I'm uh, running. I ran the update, right? So we'll go over here to assets. We'll go to dot. And then we can go to the wallet section and we'll um, send dot. We'll send it all. <laughs> Something weird happened with my graphic card. I don't know what that was. It's kind of scary. Oh, oh, okay. That was um, that was my graphics card recognizing that my monitors are G-Sync compatible. Ooh, okay. Because I had everything disconnected earlier today. All right, it's going to cost me a little bit of dot. Uh, I'm going to need my... Two factor. All right, get that. Okay, that goes out. Okay, I just got a email alert. Let's uh, let's see. Let's go down to Cardano. There, let's do that. Let's grab grab the address of my Cardano wallet. And we'll send uh, some Cardano. We can do the same thing here. We'll do Cardano. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, we go to Wallet. We'll do a Send All. We'll paste in that address. We'll hit Continue. And I need my two-factor. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to let it cycle. All right. Okay, it said I sent that dot out. Or I'm sorry, that Cardano. Okay, let's see what's happening over here. Still waiting. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, could be 20 minutes, right? It said 20 minutes. Let's go over here. Um, let's check the dot. Was it this one? Okay. Yeah. So there's some dot in here now. Now it's, it's working for me. I'm seeing my dot balance and it's accurate. Right. Uh, but I think it was uh, Valance uh, asked earlier, said that after he ran the, the Ledger Live update, that now his polka dot doesn't work anymore. Uh, so let's go ahead and remove this from the portfolio. There were two different accounts. Let's remove that one as well, just so it doesn't confuse us anymore. And then, uh, so, oh, okay, well, I just removed my uh, dot. Is it gone? No, it's still on the private key for the wallet. It's still on the Ledger device. It's just not showing up in Ledger Live. So let's do an add account. I'll turn this camera on again. Uh, I need to get out of the app. All right. And it's going to, all right, let's do dot. We're at, we're re-adding the dot, right? Now it wants me to open the dot, right? Now, if you don't ever look over on your device and just sit there waiting for this, it will eventually bomb out on you. And that's where I think some people think, oh, 
my my device isn't connecting to Ledger Live. Well, no, it's that it was asking you to do something. It says open Polkadot app on your device. So if you like just sit here and stare at this screen, it will eventually go, oh, do you want me to troubleshoot for you or something like that? You're not connected, right? Let me see if I can get it to happen. Of course, it won't. All right, let's just skip it. But sometimes you need to pay attention to what's going on on your device, right? So we'll go ahead and open it on the device by hitting both buttons because it was pretty much asking us. All right, there's that dot account. Okay, I'll only add the one. There's an old, uh, there's another account there with zero balance with a transaction history. Uh, polka dot balance is showing correctly. Uh, the value of the balance looks correct, and I still have my transaction history. So I'm not really sure what's going on with the gentleman that was claiming that. It, when he did the update, his dot balance disappeared because it doesn't appear to be caused by the update. And Ledger Live really has nothing to do with it. So it's probably an issue with your computer. I, I don't mean to point fingers, but it now uh, there are there there are other issues where um, whoops, sorry, sometimes, Ledger Live puts out an update, and they test it on a variety of machines, right? They test it on Mac. They test it on Unix. They test it on Windows 11. They test it on Windows 8. They might, you know, they don't support Windows 7 anymore, but they may have a couple of Windows machines around the office in their dev pool or whatever, and they'll test it on those, right? They might probably be testing it on the French version of Windows, possibly. Right. But they're not going to test it on hundreds of machines. Right. So there's no way they can know about all the different combinations of circumstances that could arise if your particular machine is running a version of Windows from like a couple of updates back because you haven't updated it yet or uh something for whatever reason the the updates got stuck which i've seen happen on computers that are kind of like getting older or whatever the updates get stuck and you can't get your update downloaded so you're kind of in limbo you can't get windows fully updated and so there's like your computer update is kind of bricked and so in those types of machines that combination of the ledger code and that particular circumstance of that machine might be causing synchronization issues or whatever that are not happening on my machine because my machine is, is like running the latest, latest, latest version of Windows. I keep my machine fully updated. I got plenty of room on my hard disk. If you have an older hard disk that's almost full, you're going to have all kinds of issues because... Uh, Windows uses the hard disk as kind of a scratch area for memory. So when your disk is almost full, all kinds of weird stuff is going to happen. So good machine, fully updated, uh, a good hard drive with plenty of extra free space. So I don't usually have issues, but maybe some of you do if you have any combination of those, that, those bad circumstances. Still waiting for this optimistic thing. Uh, okay, so we looked at the uh, dot, right? Now, um, if you look at the Cardano that we put in here, wherever it is, where'd it go? Oh, um, huh, still hasn't shown up. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it won't show up, didn't I? This is the address that I used. Right, it should show up. But it's not, hasn't transferred over from Ledger Live yet. That's okay. 
Uh, oh, oh, uh, I wanted to thank everyone tonight that uh, participated in the. Um, let me see if I can get it here. Um, let me do this. I just don't want you to see that one spot. I don't know how to get to this without starting at my dashboard. Um, whoops. Uh, but I did kind of a survey earlier and I asked, what crypto would you like me to uh, store and manage tonight? And uh, the number one was Ripple, interestingly enough. So I am going to do some Ripple. I uh, kind of got ahead of myself and uh, I put too much of that stable coin on Coinbase. I was going to use some of that stable coin uh, to put over on my um, Kraken account because you can buy XRP on Kraken. But what the heck? So in order to sign in to Kraken, I have a, a Yubi key that I need to touch, right? I have, that's my uh, two-factor on my Kraken because Kraken supports it. It's pretty cool that way. Uh, let's see. Can I trade for XRP? Oh, I guess not. I thought I could. Maybe I'm wrong. Huh. Okay. Maybe I was wrong. No. Okay. I thought you could get XRP on Kraken. I guess I was wrong. Okay. Uh, huh. Okay. Uh, it's kind of weird. Yeah. Because I thought you could. Okay. Well, it would show up here if I could. It's not. All right, so uh, let's use uh, KuCoin. We can do it on KuCoin. I know we can. Oh, yeah. Captchas. You just hate them. Okay. I'm going to let this uh, two-factor cycle. Look at that. And oh, that was KuCoin telling me that I just logged in. Uh, do I have any? Oh, I got still got a hundred bucks left here. Um, uh, let's go ahead and send some. All right, let's get some. <laughs> uh, let's buy some Tether. I will do it that way. With money that's in. Okay, we'll buy 50 bucks worth of Tether. It's going to cost me two bucks. It's a budget. We're on a budget. Okay. All right, so now, whoops. Let's go ahead and send that tether over to our KuCoin account. We can like get that started while we're waiting on other stuff. All right. Uh, oh, that's not what it's like. Send. Okay, so we want to deposit ERC twenty base tether into our KuCoin account, into our trading account. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll just send. Tether. To the address of my KuCoin Tether wallet. We'll send it all. All right, and then I need to. All right, while all that's percolating, I'm going to see if I can catch up to the chat window. Whoops. Whoops. Okay, still. 
Just didn't want to forget about this. Uh, oh, uh, so uh, I'm going to get caught up on the chat window and then we'll do um, Trez. Trez. Okay. Trying to remember. Trying not to. Okay. All right. Mm. Mr. Miski Rex is getting sick of Uphold. Yes. Uphold sent me an email. Uh, although I have already authorized myself on Uphold at least three times that I've been able to keep count. I give it my information. I, I give it whatever it wants. I think it was my ID or whatever. And then, okay, you're good. And then a month or two later, I go back on there and it goes, we require more information. And so I go through the same thing again, right? And then at one point it's like, well, now we need more information. We need your social security number. So I do all that, jump through all these hoops. We used Uphold last week, right? I got an email from them saying, now they want me to fill out a W-2 or a W-4 or whatever. And I have to fill out a tax form and send it to them. I'm like, I'm done with you. I'm just tired of this. Uh, okay. Okay, you have to sell first on the exchange. Okay. Yes, I heard nothing about the XRP deadline. Not one whiff of any kind of information about what went down with this. I thought that the judge was going to make a decision, but haven't heard anything about it. Uh, let's see. Can you show us how to send to FTX? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. We played with FTX a couple months back when I was trying to do the... Uh, well, actually, I played with FTX a little bit um, before Ledger had the FTX-based swap integrated into Ledger Live. I opened up an FTX account, and we played around with it a little bit. I wasn't real happy with it because it took a really long time to verify my... Uh, deposit like 10 days like I made a deposit uh, from my bank I guess and then uh, I bought some Bitcoin and it wouldn't let me withdraw it immediately it said I had to wait for 7 days but it ended up making me wait 10 days before I could withdraw my crypto from their exchange and I was like eh and then I tried their, uh, that integrated swap, and something went wrong. It never worked right for me. I sent uh, something to their tech support, and they were like, oh, well, it, it went through on our end. And I was like, well, it didn't. I never got the ETH that I was supposed to get on my swap. Anyway. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I want to go back up because when I'm, I rewatch this in the next, the next day, uh, psychedelic astronaut, whether you can help or not, your attention is greatly appreciated. So basically, psychedelic astronaut, we need to get this uh, ETH deposit into our wallet. It, we basically need to convert our Ethereum into the uh, op optim optimal optimism. That's the name of it? Optimism? <laughs> That's optimism. Hopefully this will be done before the live stream ends and I'll be able to actually show you my withdrawal. Uh, Jay Giles, Jr. Purchased the Ledger Nano X thanks to your instructional videos. Everything went perfect. 90% of my crypto is now offline. Thank you for the videos. Keep them coming. Thank you. Thank you, Jr. Giles. Uh, thanking JDO, Mr. Miskit. Buy a new Mac compatible to cable USB-C. There are USB-C converters out there. I think I may have one laying around here somewhere. Um, of course, I'm not going to be able to find it right now. But it's not... It's not rocket science. It's just like a little connector 
you know, and one side is small and the other side is big, and you put it on the end of your USB-C connector and it, mm, I don't know, maybe it's the other way around. Anyway, you can convert uh, a USB-C cable to a regular USB cable. There's connectors for them. Or you can buy uh, cables on Amazon dirt cheap, you know, like 10 bucks. You can get a USB uh, USB uh, A to USB C connector. So one side goes in the regular uh, USB connector in the back of your computer, and then the other side is a USB C. Um, I think I have, I'm using one right now for the ledger. This side connects to the ledger, and then the other one connects to the computer. And it does. Um, that's the cable you get in the box. But you can also get a C to C cable that's got a C connector on one side and a C connector on the other side. Because my uh, motherboard has a little tiny C port in the back, you know. So I can use that as well. So a lot of the Mac laptops have the Apple C connector. I think they also call it Thunderbolt, but it's just a USB C. Um. Oh, so there is no more Coinbase Pro. I got an alert or an email from Coinbase telling me that my Coinbase Pro account has now been deactivated and now I'm, I have to use Coinbase Advanced Trade, right? So if you go into Coinbase, right, you, where I was, right? All this stuff I've been doing tonight is the Advanced Trade. There's advanced trade and simple trade, right? But advanced trade is like the fees are lower. And it's pretty much exactly what Coinbase Pro was. It's the same thing. They just like merged Coinbase and Coinbase Pro, which I don't know why they were separate to begin with. I don't know. I guess they were trying to keep like Coinbase vanilla like easy to understand for a newbie, right? And then you had the separate thing you would sign in if you knew what you were doing, right? Coinbase Pro. But now they just kind of combined them. Uh, Coinbase Pro is officially over. Oh, yeah, yeah. I should be reading more. Okay, If you go to settings on Coinbase Wallet, there's an optimism network, but it didn't make a difference. Um, we, we should be able to, if we can get this thing to go through ever, once we this happens then we should be able to go to the Coinbase wallet and, um, oh, why am I not connected? It's not connected. That's weird. I thought we had it before, didn't we? Find the connect wallet button. Huh. Okay. That was weird. Because we had it earlier. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I thought we had done this. Okay, there. It says we're on uh, says we're on the optimism network. But it should well let's check MetaMask, right? Because MetaMask is, I understand MetaMask a little better here. If we switch over to Optimism. Ah, okay. See, now it shows that ETH in there, even though that other thing isn't quite done yet. Right? Now that we, we have our Optimism tokens, and we have the, the ETH that is compatible with Optimism. Right? So now we should be able to go into uh, Coinbase Wallet and send uh, that optimism token somewhere else, right? That's the whole idea here is we're, we're trying to withdraw it, right? I don't know, maybe you want to put it back in Coinbase, right? Let's try that. Let's put it back in Coinbase. Uh, let's see. We want to, come on, Rex. Send, receive. We want to receive the optimism, right? Got a zero balance. Uh, there's my optimism address for Coinbase. Let's go back over to our Coinbase wallet. 
Come on, where are we doing here? Here. Is it just me? Okay, there. Okay, all right, now it's confusing because now I've got both of them open. Let's just put an empty tab here. Let's look at this Coinbase wallet. It, <laughs> now it's like telling me I'm not connected again. What is that supposed to mean? New tab. Okay, I guess I need to have that. This. This, I really hate this Coinbase wallet, I have to tell you. It's just so daft. Okay, there. See, it's showing me that I'm on the Optimism network. And I want to send my Opti, right? And I want to send it all. And I want to send it to my Coinbase account. And now I should be able to send, right? Because I've got some Ethereum in there that's compatible. Bah! Oh, I'm not, that's the ledger. <laughs> That's okay. We just got to get the, this is a ledger based account. So I just need to open up my Ethereum app. All right. There's the Ethereum app. We've got that open. Now we'll try again. Uh, I got to approve. Let's do that. Okay. Notice it says Optimism, Optimism Network. Do that. Successfully sent. Done. That's it. So you might want to review the video. You remember I went over to their... They have like this gateway. I found it on their... I don't remember how I did it. <laughs> I was just messing around. But we got it out of there. Now the only thing I don't do is like get that 20 bucks worth of ETH out of there that I left in there. It was too much. But we should see the optimism come in to our uh, Coinbase account shortly. Now I got it there. Uh, wallet. I should see, in a bit, I should see like an incoming optimism. It shows where I sent it out earlier. Yeah. Okay, so now I wanted to show you the difference in uh, Trezor between a, um, a standard wallet and a... If I can get out of this... Yeah. When you uh, sign in, it asks you if you want a standard wallet or a hidden wallet, and it gives you the option. So let's add a hidden wallet here. All right, and I'm going to just create a passphrase. Wait, before I... Do, 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 do. Or I could enter it on the Trezor. I'm not going to do that. Although that would be more secure, I would imagine. But just very tedious. All right, now it wants me to do something. Ah! God dog it. I wasn't fast enough. Let's try that again. I think it wanted me to... Okay, let's try this again. I'm just going to look at it because I cannot do this. Okay. Okay. Use this password. Yes. Okay. Actually, it would been it's better that I was looking at it because it showed my passphrase. And I don't want you to see my passphrase. So, uh, I just picked a new passphrase. Uh, okay. Uh, make sure it is empty. Please type passphrase again. Okay. Yes. 
I understand passphrases cannot be retrieved, unlike everyday passwords. Yes, I can. I, I get it. Now it wants me to do this again on my ledger. It asked me twice because it found an empty wallet and was like, there's nothing here. All right, so here's my empty wallet that is accessed through my passphrase, right? If you notice, I was going to try to go back, but there was a balance in here earlier. The standard wallet has a balance, right? But the hidden wallet has zero balance. So let's put some Bitcoin in the hidden wallet. We'll just do a receive. Go ahead and hit show full address. Right? It wants me to.
Damn it. Sorry. Pfft. Again with this stupid mic? Okay. Sorry. I was up looking at the top. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How much did you guys miss? All right. I'm going to bed. <laughs> 18 minutes. No sound. Damn it. The reason I didn't see you all screaming at me was because I was reviewing up above, looking at earlier comments and trying to get caught up. Bad, bad, bad. Uh, wow. I don't know what to say, guys. I don't know. It's like if I could put some tape or some clay or something on this mic. It's this stupid. It mutes. It was like, if so, if I accidentally touch it on the top, it mutes. I wish it would like a, like give me like this alert. Your mic is muted. Like mic in mute mode. But no. I just accidentally tap it and it goes red on me. And I don't see it because I'm right up here. And if I look down, I don't see the mic light because it's covered up by what is in front of my face. Oh, well. Another boomer move. All right. All right, I'll go ahead and finish what I was doing here. God. Man, it's like, I, it's like why even bother with this live stream if I can't be professional? All right, I got to get out of Bitcoin here. Man, so frustrating. Unbelievable. And I'm sure you guys are like, Whoa. screw this guy. He's an idiot. I'm not going to watch this live stream. There's good stuff over on Pornhub. Right? All right. So now I'm in the Ethereum app. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to convert that Ethereum that I put. Yeah. <laughs> That's 100 bucks worth of Ethereum. Yeah. I want to move that back into regular Ethereum. Oh my god. Is that am I doing what I thought I was doing? I hope I'm doing what I thought I was doing. Maybe I wasn't. Maybe I was move maybe I'm moving the Ethereum. Okay. Anyway, I'm so sorry about that mic. Just so frustrating. All right, so there's that conversion. Hopefully we'll... Yeah, what we're trying to do, and I think I did what I didn't want to do, which is I just emptied the rest of the Ethereum out there. I was trying to do it the other way, but I failed miserably. Yeah, I... Anyway, I'll fix it later. Oh, okay. Sorry, guys. Yes, thank you. 16 minutes without sound. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Sorry, guys. It was a combination of me accidentally hitting the mic and being up at the top of the live stream chat window looking at uh, previous comments trying to get caught up. So I didn't see everyone screaming at me. It was fun for a while. <laughs> You're way too hard on yourself. We all, I don't know, but this has happened like five or six times in my live stream that I've accidentally muted this stupid mic and like everyone's screaming at me <sighs> way too often. Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> the great silence of 2022. Thank you. <laughs> and I had my phone muted because we were watching a movie last night. So I muted my phone. So because I occasionally get texts. And I hate when a text comes in while I'm watching a movie. So <laughs> Dan, Dan texted me 16 times. <laughs> You touched your mic. You 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 muted yourself. All right. Oh God in heaven. This is just too much. I can't take it anymore. Uh wallet to wallet transfers. Okay, let's do that. Uh first of all, let's get back to the uh standard wallet. All right. Uh I have some chills in this wallet over here in tokens. And I'd like to put some more chills in this wallet. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'll get the address from here, from my treasure. All right, I'll tap that. And I'll copy the address of my treasure into my clipboard. Now I'm going to go over to my ledger, which I also have connected because I have it's connect. I have two different cables. Uh, one is they're both connected to my computer, and I have the ledger and a treasure both connected at the same time. They don't interfere with each other. So now I can go over to this uh, ledger into Ethereum main, and there's some uh, chills in here, All right? I can send it over to my Trezor wallet because I've just pulled the address from my clipboard. And we'll hit continue. Let's hit max. And it's going to cost me $1.24 in Ethereum. I'll hit continue again. And it's going to ask me to review it. Uh, and there I was like lecturing people earlier about making sure your device is connected and troubleshooting a connection and trying a different port and everything. And <laughs> I can't even do a live stream without muting my mic. Okay. So that's what I get for harping on people for. Okay. So the chills went out and it should come in over here. I don't know why I can't see like a uh, this is December 3rd. Oh, it just came in. Okay, there. 236 chills. So now I have uh, what, 1661 chills. So I got $276 worth of chills in my Trezor wallet. So as you can see, it's easy to transfer crypto between wallets. What else were we going to do? Storing and managing HBAR. Uh, let's see. Um, HBAR is supported in Ledger Live now, and you don't have to like make an account anymore. There's when you, uh, when you click you don't have to pay for an account, H bar. Like I used to think you had to pay, but you don't. Let's get out. So if we add an account, we can just choose H bar. Hedra Hashgraph, I guess they call it. Wants me to open the Hedra app, right? We have to. Download and install the Hedra HBAR app. If you don't have the app installed on the device, it will install it for you. And then notice there's a little bit, there's an account already in there. I created this account a while back. So just because it wasn't showing up in Ledger Live didn't mean that I had lost the crypto. It was on the device, right? There it is. 
And as you can see, there's a little bit in there. Um, and they have a weird kind of like address format. It's like a 0 0.011, just a weird address format. <laughs> Dan, Dan was texting me over and over again. Okay. Uh, let's see. Where can we buy HBAR? Now I'm paranoid. I'm going to look at it, see if it's muted again. God, I hate this mic, man. So I'm going to throw this mic through the window. It was so much easier when I had a little stand uh, right next to my keyboard, but it's the sound was better when I got this boom and the mic was next to my mouth. But when I had that stand, it, I never had this issue because I didn't accidentally touch the top of it. But I do now that I have it on a boom. <laughs> I can't stop talking about it, can I? Okay. Uh, what were you trying to figure out where Hedra Hashgraph is, huh? Where can we buy it? I don't remember where I bought it. Probably on... Oh, you can buy it on Coinbase. Ooh, what do you know? Oh, uh, let's go. And someone was asking... This is... Someone was asking me about... Uh, how you move crypto to your bank, right? And I guess maybe I was muted when I was talking about that, but you move crypto from your wallet to your exchange. And then once the uh, crypto hits your exchange, then you can uh, swap it for cash. Um, okay, that's correct. Uh, there's some Bitcoin on its way over here. If we go down here to Bitcoin, should show that there's some incoming Bitcoin, right? There's a pending Bitcoin deposit. But once you have the Bitcoin, then you can swap it for cash. Um, so I could trade like Bitcoin for cash or cash for Bitcoin. And once I have the cash in my account, right? You can see that, are, that I have United States dollar in my Coinbase account. Now I can move to my bank, right? Cash to cash, right? The bank doesn't know about Bitcoin, but it will accept a withdrawal from Coinbase, right? I can withdraw from Coinbase, but I have to have my bank account connected and set up within Coinbase. So you have to have that done ahead of time. You have to have... But I'm assuming if you bought some crypto and put it in your ledger that you probably have some kind of bank account set up with an exchange. I could be wrong. Maybe you used a credit card or a debit card or some funky payment processor like MoonPay or something. But in order to withdraw your crypto proceeds from an exchange like Coinbase, you need to have a bank account connected. So I can, I can send this to my Chase account if I want, right? And so it cashes out, goes into my Chase account. Now, when I do this on the weekend, I probably won't hit my bank till Monday, sometimes even Tuesday. But during the week when you do a cash out from Coinbase, Usually if you do it early in the day, you'll see it hit your account before the end of the day. Like if you pull it out like around 9 or 9.30 or 10 a.m., you usually see it in your bank account by 2 or 3. Right. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to transfer my XRP from Ledger to Uphold. And it keeps saying invalid wallet. What? Sh not sure what I'm doing wrong. Well, we still hate uphold, don't we? 
Oh, that's right. You can buy XRP on Uphold. Yeah. All right. So you're trying to put... Uh, well, first of all, you need to get the XRP address of your Uphold. Um, hmm. God, I hate Uphold. <laughs> I just despise it. Okay. Um, all right. We want two, right? So we want it to be XRP and we want it to come from. See, yeah, this is just so whacked out. Hmm. Only XRP. Okay. There's the XRP address right there. And there's the tag. Right? So in order to deposit XRP in Uphold, I have to use both, right? So if I go over to my well, XRP wallet and I hit send, I got to put that address in there that I got from Uphold and I need that destination tag. And now I can send. I'm not sure what you're pasting in here, but it should be an Uphold. Or I mean, it should be an XRP address. Right, and then I could send like, how much is that? Three bucks? Yeah, I'll send 10. 10 XRP over to Uphold. <laughs> Uphold's like, what? All right. All right, I have to open the app. And then I'll need to authorize the outgoing transaction. There's the tag, there's the fee, and then I sign it by clicking both buttons. And we're done. All right, so it should be coming in shortly. Yeah, that was weird. Oh, okay. So first I had to say I want to send crypto in, right, by choosing XRP, which it's already chosen for me. Then I had to tell it I'm sending it from a network, right? Not one of my accounts, but a network, the XRP Ledger Network, right? And then it gave me the receiving address for Uphold. See, it wants tax certification. It wants a W-9. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uphold. Uh, I'm not sure how long it's going to take. Oh, there. It came in. There. $3.89. There you go. The only reason I opened an Uphold account was because that was the only way I could get my Brave rewards cashed out. The only way Brave would, like, use my rewards was to connect an Uphold account. So that was the only way I could withdraw Brave from my Brave browser. But I think now you can uh, withdraw it. <laughs> Uphold said it was 10. Oh, it is 10. It's, it's 10 XRP. <laughs> okay. Uh, Valentia, can you transfer money from Coinbase to PayPal? Oh, my God. You don't have a bank? Um, I don't think PayPal works with Coinbase. I could be wrong. You know you get killed with fees on PayPal. Um, wait, let's see if I can. What? No. Oh, add bank account, add debit card. I don't see PayPal here. So maybe you could add your PayPal debit card if you have a PayPal debit card. 
but all I see are bank account and debit card. I don't see PayPal. <laughs> you know, PayPal will allow you to deposit crypto directly. If you go to your PayPal account, Oh my God. Uh wherever it went. They used to be able to do it. Maybe they stopped. Huh. Well, that's really weird. Aha! Here. See? So you can deposit Bitcoin into your PayPal account if you want to. Um, maybe, oh, here, here, transfer, there you go, transfer, receive BTC, blah, 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 there it is, there's my uh, PayPal Bitcoin address, maybe that's more your speed, right, if you don't want to connect your bank to Coinbase. <laughs> Both PayPal and Uphold are funky uh, legacy finance services that give you all kinds of grief over, oh, you got to fill out a tax form, you got to do this, you got to do that. And I mean, they just make it really hard to deal with Bitcoin or anything, really. Even like, have you ever, like I had, when I was managing an apartment complex, I had a tenant that wanted to give me their deposit using their PayPal account. And she sent me like $2,500 deposit and PayPal deducted like $97 out of it. So I was like, oh, I'm really sorry, but you have to send me more because PayPal just ganked you $97 on your $22,500. So... PayPal. I wouldn't mess around with PayPal or, and I'm not really wanting to mess around with Uphold much anymore either. Uh, if you're going to deal in crypto, then use a reputable, reliable, crypto-oriented cryptocurrency exchange like Coinbase. I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting too old for this. Coinbase, Kraken, Binance US, like crypto to PayPal, crypto to uh, uphold, you're going to just, they're going to gank you so hard on their fees and all their documentation and stuff that they want from you. Anyway. All right. I'm really sorry about the 16 minutes of silence. Uh, thank you, guy, everyone. I, I didn't get to Adam. That was kind of low on everyone's priority. Uh, we did Bitcoin, we did Ripple. We did some ERC-20 transfers tonight. So I hope all of you that participated in the um, poll there got what you were hoping to see. And uh, once again, I appreciate everyone being here. <laughs> oh, uh, Dan just provided you a link on how to... Now, I remember when I first activated the Bitcoin in PayPal, I had to jump through some hoops to get... Uh, the receive, the transaction stuff. They wanted, like, the, I think they wanted my Social Security number to do that. So it's not easy. <laughs> but it, I did get it done at some point. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here. Sorry about the silence. I uh, hope you guys could uh, at least see what I was doing while I was, like, babbling in silence. Don't forget, we'll do this next week, and I'll try not to mute my mic. 
I do it every week, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please join me for the live stream from Michigan, where you can throw out questions, and I'll do my best to get them answered. Hope to see you there. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining.